Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Inspiron 580 upgrade video. This is part two. If you haven't watched the first uh, video, what is wrong with you? Pause this video and go watch that one. Then come back to this one and it's all going to make a whole lot of sense of what I'm doing. Unless you read the title and it instantly makes sense to you. We're going to be upgrading the Inspiron 580 to a gaming computer because in the last video this thing was not a gaming computer by any stretch of the imagination whatsoever. Not only that, but if you're looking to get into PC gaming, this is one of the best routes I think you can take for the cheapest if you have a budget to get into PC gaming. So stick around, see what specs I picked, and maybe you can just find that for yourself and get a pretty good decent gaming computer like I have here. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on to the specs, some benchmarks, and then the conclusion. Comparison between this old PC and the upgraded one because it is shockingly impressive of what this thing can do. So I'm gonna stop talking and let's get on, so roll that intro. So I upgraded three components in this PC, taking it from a very weak PC to a mid-range gaming PC. And those parts are as follows, the CPU, the GPU, and also the power supply. I also added another stick of RAM and uh, why don't I just get into the components and what I got for it. The first thing I picked up, hold on. And the first thing I got for it was a brand new CPU. I picked up the i7-870 for $25 from a local seller. Now the i7-870 is a first gen i7 with 4 cores and 8 threads with a base frequency of 2.93 GHz and a turboing speed of 3.6. Now there is actually a weird problem with mine and I don't really know what the problem is. You'll see in some of the games that it doesn't actually boost the whole way up to 3.6. It sticks around about 3.2. Now I was looking on some forums and I couldn't really find a solution to fix this so some of the performance that it you would usually have it's not having but anyway this was released the exact same time as the i3 550 in 2009 anyway next i added another stick of ddr3 ram that would be an extra two gigs we had six before but now we have a total of eight just to fill up all those dim slots i had one of those sticks lying around but you can find them for like five to ten dollars like two to four gigs that i was looking around the next component i bought really brought this gaming pc together making it a actual powerful pc and that would be the graphics card i picked up an evga g GTX 970 SSC, which the SSC stands for Super Super Clocked, which is a, a great name, I guess. This has 4 gigs of VRAM and was released in 2014, and this at the time was a pretty high-end card. You had the 980 Ti, which was very good, the 980, and then the 970, and then there also was a Titan, I think, up there as well. But overall, this was a solid card at the time, and still is a solid card to this day. For under $100, I picked this thing up. I paid $90 for it. And this is one of the best cards that I think you can get for under $100. Now, one of the other components that I had to upgrade was the power supply. This 500 watt 8 sec power supply did very well. I got it for $25 from a local seller as well. And it has a 3 pin and also an 8 pin, which is best amount or the exact amount that we need for our GPU. How convenient. So all three of these components combined equals less than $150, 25, 25, and 90. That is pretty impressive. But also, I did forget to mention that I did have an SSD in here. I think it was like $40. It's a 480 gig something something brand. I, It's like team or something. Team group. Whatever. I don't really know what uh, I really don't know who actually makes that. But anyway, if you're doing something like this, you wouldn't have to go with a 970. For instance, is this R9380, which is about $60, $50 to $60, would do just as well. Actually, well, not just as well. It'd be a little bit underpowered, but it would still gain pretty well. But if you want to go even cheaper, let's say $40, you could pick up this GTX 660, which still is an okay card to this day. And if you want to see some of these benchmarks, be sure to check out my other channel where I actually do a lot of benchmarking videos. So if you want to get started with PC gaming, but you don't have a computer and have a budget, I think this is one of the best options that you can do. Okay, so that's great, Zach, but how well does this thing actually game? Well, I'm glad you asked because I did a lot of benchmarks. So I'm going to quickly go over these benchmarks and then afterwards compare the old PC to this one or the same PC, but it's just upgraded to see how big of a difference there will be. And guaranteed, there is going to be a very large difference. So anyway, let's get on to these benchmarks.
Okay, so taking a look at some of these benchmarks with the i3-550 and the i7-870. For Cinebench R20, the i3 got a score of 491 points, while the i7 got 1,004 points. So quite a bit of a difference there. Obviously, the extra cores on the i7 is helping it out just a little bit in that rendering test. For the next benchmark, we have Geekbench 5, just the CPU test, and here are the results for both of them. So about a hundred points increase for the single core and about a thousand for the multi-core. Now moving into some of the graphical performances, this is the, with the GT640 and then it would be against the GTX 970. Unigine Valley set to low, the GT640 got a score of 1,983, the GTX 970 getting uh, set at high, getting a score of 2,441. Now you might be wondering, Zach, that doesn't seem too far off from the 970. Well, let me tell you something. Low and high are two very different things. Very different, actually. It's vast. And I didn't set the other one at high, but I'm guessing it would not have gotten that score or anything close to the 970. Anyway, Minecraft up next with the average being 86 and the 1% lows being 15. Well, the GTX 970 pulls in a nice smooth 161 for the average and 37 for the 1% lows. Next we have Fortnite set at low with the average of 4 to 5 FPS and the 1% lows being, well, I, I guess 0. On the RX 970 set at medium, I got an average of 117 and the 1% lows of 53. Now this is a game that I'd rather have a high refresh rate than having the quality turned way up for optimization for my 144Hz monitor so that increases the quality of play or the, the speed in which you see it as you can do better with a higher refresh rate. Anyway, Rise of the Tomb Raider set at low was playable but not that comfortable with the total ending FPS at 25.03. On the GTX 970 set at high which played very well it got 69.04 FPS in the benchmark. And then I did not test this last game, which is the newest game in my collection that I'm benchmarking, which is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And I really wanted to see if I could actually play it on there. And sure enough, and surprisingly, it plays very well. Set at high, in the in-game benchmark, I got an average of 51 FPS, which means that you can really play this thing in 2020, which is very cool in my opinion. So, can you make a gaming PC out of a 2010 desktop PC? Yes. Yes, you can. Very much so. And matter of fact, it does impressively well. So well that if you're looking for a PC today, under $200, this might be one of your best options. Now, actually, I would probably look for something a little bit newer, which reminds me, you should definitely get subscribed because I have another computer coming out that features an i7 second gen. So get subscribed so you don't miss out on that because that might be the best bang for your buck computer that you could get at the moment. But anyway, this has been a Dell Inspiron upgraded into a 2020 gaming PC. I hope you enjoyed both of these videos and don't forget also to check out my other channel where I put benchmarking videos. Like I said before, that'll be linked down in the description. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and with that being said, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Peace.